Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in this lesson, Carter Arrington is going to share with us an awesome approach to soloing over any chord where instead of limiting ourselves to the arpeggio of that chord, we can play the arpeggio that starts on any of the other notes of that chord and that fits within the key. So this gives us access to all of those juicy and jazzy extension tones like the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th without having to learn anything other than basic 7th chord arpeggios. So now Carter is going to explain how he first picked up this idea from George Benson and then demonstrate and teach us how to use it to open up a new range of sounds in our soloing. You'll also have our Fret Live animations and graphics each step of the way to help you see it all very clearly on the fretboard. And at the end, there will be a guided jam track section where you can try this out on your own and make it a part of your own personal sound. For POW Music patrons, there's a companion PDF with all of the basic 7th chord arpeggios as both tab and fretboard diagrams for your reference. All right, let's get into it. And really, this was a George Benson thing. I would hear him play off the, the, um, the chord a, th a minor third up, like kind of, kind of the relative major version of that. You, you know, so he right. would, he'd be playing over a D minor chord, but he'd be playing do stuff like that, you know, to where he was. Yeah, yeah, kind of that thing. And and so then I kind of discovered, I was like, oh man, well like, F major seven sounds awesome right. over this. Yeah. You know, so I'd be playing over D. And I'd start kind of. And then, and then I kind of cruise up here. I was like, okay, like that sounds like that's cool. That yeah. sounds a little jazzy, and that's right. it, and that's the thing. Yeah. And I was like, well, okay, that's a that's a note that's in the scale or that's in the chord. Right. And I just kind of looked at the relative chord of the key. Right. Um, so then I did it on the next one, which was A minor. Ah, uh, on the D. On the D. Yeah. And then the, so like even with those three, I'd kind of like instead of feeling stuck in a pattern, yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, well I've got this sound. So they were kind of right. they were kind of three different shapes that I could use. Yeah, and so then, which essentially I think of as like, okay, I just kind of like started exploding the major scale. Right. I was like, wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. So basically off each note of that initial triad, you got the D minor, you got the F major, and then the A minor. And then the A minor. And, and you could do the, getting your you could do the extensions C. of the... Yeah, right. same thing. So like here, if we play the D minor seven, we get four chord tones. Right. You know, one, flat three, five, and seven. Yeah. And with this chord, we're still thinking of D as the center of the universe. Right. So this gives me flat three, five, flat seven, nine. So we had, we went from four chord tones to three chord tones and yep. an extension. Right. Then if you go to A minor, you get two chord tones and two extensions. Right. If you go to C, you get one chord tone, the flat seven, and, and three, three extensions. extensions. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you just have this. It's just highlighting notes mm -hmm. that are in the Dorian scale. Yeah. But it's just that it's framing them in a way that makes them sound different. Awesome. And now this as an approach is something you heard in your ear in George Benson's playing, you were saying? Yeah, I would uh -huh. hear him do the do the stuff off the third. Right. Uh, like quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so like that little leg. Yeah. Which is straight up. That's F major seven arpeggio. Yeah, and he would just kind of Greg Howe did it too. I would hear him play it a lot, but Nice. And just and I was like, man, what does that sound like? That's cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, once I just kind of found that, I was like, oh man, let's let's see what else is hiding in there. So, uh, just over one chord, I started th I started basically superimposing things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting here playing over D minor seven, but I'm thinking about other things. Right. Right. You know, right. I'm not yeah, just yeah. like, oh, okay, everything's in D Dorian or right. D minor pentatonic. So like, off the bat, you have this freedom to kind of just shift the shape and shift the... Exactly. Yeah. And playing changes, once it came to playing chord changes, right. the process was really similar, okay. except now the harmony was changing. Right. All right, everybody. So now it's time for us to do our homework and workshop these ideas a little bit. So Carter gave us that lesson. We're going to take these ideas right there. We're going to do that. 
We're gonna take these ideas and workshop them and try to make them our own. So you're gonna see me do that for, you know, maybe like a minute. Then there's gonna be a minute of jam track for you to do it on your own. And then we're gonna go deeper into the theory. Well, not really deeper, we're gonna go more foundational. So in case you were a little confused about what's going on, what are these arpeggios? What are these chords? Why did we choose th these arpeggios over that chord? We're gonna make sure you understand that on a foundational level and then talk about how, as long as you know what key you're in, you'll know which arpeggios to use and we could use this technique over any chord and even over a chord progression. So first the jam, we workshop the ideas, then we go into the theory and see how we could do this in any situation. All right, let's do it. All right, everybody. So in this segment, I just want to go a little bit deeper on the theory, not to make things more confusing, to make them easier to understand so that you could see how you could use this over any chord in any key. And just so you understand, why did we choose the arpeggios we chose over that D minor? And how does that relate to what key we're in? Okay, so why did we choose those arpeggios? So we were jamming over D minor or D minor seven. And Carter was playing around with the tonality of D Dorian mode. When you have a one chord jam, the fact that it's a minor seven chord, you can choose any kind of scale that includes all the notes of this chord. So this chord here has relative to D, a root, a fifth, a minor seventh, and a minor third. So there's a few different scales that we could play over that chord. We could play the D natural minor scale. We could play the D Dorian mode. D Phrygian mode, those are three scales that all contain these same four notes that are in this chord. So the difference, the D natural minor scale would be one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. The D Dorian mode would be one, two, flat three, four, five, major six, minor seven, or flat seven, one. And then the Phrygian would be one, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. What they all have in common is one, five, flat seven, flat three. So there's gonna be a match there. But because Carter said D Dorian mode, what that meant is, okay, if I'm in D Dorian mode, what are the other seventh chords in that tonality? Well, D Dorian mode is the second mode of C major. 
So in other words, all the notes and all the chords in C major are the same notes and chords in D Dorian mode. So in order to first start to understand your modes, you want to understand what they're relative to. So the Dorian mode is the second mode of a major scale, right? So if it's C major scale, D Dorian. So what are the chords in C major? C major, seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B minor seven flat five, back to C. Okay, and basically what's universal to any major key is that one and four are major seven chords. Two and three and six are minor seven chords. Five is a dominant seven chord. And seven is a minor seven flat five. So what that means is that if we're in D Dorian mode, which is C major, and we want to build a seventh arpeggio on any one of the notes of a D minor seven chord, so starting on D, that's a D minor seven arpeggio. Starting on F, now F in the key of C, F is a major seven, so that would be an F major seven arpeggio. Right? That's the four chord in the key of C. One, two, three, four. Then, going back to our home arpeggio, D, F, A. Well, A in the key of C, that's a minor seven chord. So that's a minor seven arpeggio. And then finally, C, which he didn't actually demonstrate, that's gonna be a major seven arpeggio. That's the home chord, right? So, what that means is that over that D minor seven, I could play any of those arpeggios, D minor seven. F major seven. A minor seven. Major seven. And by doing so, I'm going to access all the seven notes of the key, D Dorian or C major, but in a way that frames them as a as an arpeggio, not as just scale. Right? So to play it as scale, I can go like this and still get those seven notes. And that's cool to play it as scale, but that's not going to frame it in the same way as playing it as arpeggio. It's just a different sound to play it as arpeggio. So these seven notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as scale, that's how it sounds, as arpeggio, uh, and then I can go. back to right so it has a different sound playing it as, as arpeggios and it's going to outline those extensions in a different way so it's just another tool in your toolbox so whereas a lot of people might think of okay on that chord i could either play the d minor 7 arpeggio or the scale now you have other options the d minor 7 arpeggio or the seventh chord arpeggio off of any of those other chord tones or the scale or any other arpeggios, right? So it's just more tools to work with. Okay, so how would you do this on any other chord? Same concept. So let's say we're in the key of C still and I wanted to play off a of C major seven. So now I have a C major seven. So how would I play, how would I do this over C major seven? Well, the third of the C major seven is the note E. And in the key of C, E is the three chord, so that's a minor seventh chord. So now here's C major seven as an arpeggio. Right, and that 
that gives me 1, 3, 5, 7. But now if I play off the third, E minor 7. I get the ninth, I get the note D. That note right there, right? Really jazzy, right? Now, if I play off the fifth of that chord, I can play a G7, because that's the chord of the key. But this note right here, F, it has a certain dissonance to it. Uh, the note F is the seventh of the G7 chord. So a lot of jazz players will make that what's called a sharp 11 because the note F is the 11th of the chord C. So what you could do just to avoid that dissonance of that sound is play a G major seven over a C chord. So if I play a G major seven, even though that chord, the note F is not in the key, in the context of an arpeggio, it sounds far less dissonant. Here's what I mean. Here's a, I'm gonna play a G7. Right, kind of dissonant, but now I'm gonna play a G major seven. less dissonant. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where just, again, it's still awareness of the key, but that's just a modification um, on the one chord of a key. If we're trying to play the 11th in the context of an arpeggio, we might play a sharp 11 just to avoid that dissonance. Now, what if I wanted to do it over a chord progression? So let's say still key of C, I'm going to go two, five, one. So two, five, one. That's going to be D minor seven, G7, C. One, two, three, four. Okay, so here's gonna be my approach. First thing I'm gonna do, let me just play off the third of both those chords. So D minor seven, I'm gonna play an F major seven because the third of D or the minor third is an F in the key of C, that's an F major seven. Then on the G, what's the third of G? B, that's gonna be a B minor seven flat five. And then off the one, E minor seven. Now, the cool thing is I could play them all in the same pit position. One, two, three. What's also cool is that by starting on the root of the third, you're starting on the third. The third's a strong note to start on instead of starting on the root. All right, everybody. So let's do our homework. We took this lesson with Carter. Let's make the most out of it. I've been working on incorporating it for a couple hours. I had the, you know, the camera running for at least an hour. So this topic, seventh chord arpeggios, is in unit 10 of my fret live fretboard mastery program which is my flagship program where we start from the very basics of music theory as basic as it could go just starting with our chromatic scale we've got these 12 notes let's explore them as intervals before we even talk about right or wrong or being in a key let's just hear how they all sound so right off the bat we do a little bit of ear training we get creative and we just play around with the chromatic scale. From there, we learn what it means to be in a key. Once we're in a key, how to build chords within the key, seeing those triads all over the neck. Then we get into relative major and minor, how every major key is also a minor key and the differences between the two. From there, we get into pentatonic scales versus diatonic scales and how we can learn one from the other and see how the two relate to each other. From there, we get into the cage system, which allows us to see a chord shape an arpeggio, a pentatonic scale, and a diatonic scale, all in one pattern, broken into five patterns that traverse the whole neck, and we could use those to play in any key, 
and move chord shapes and scales around. So cage system is awesome. We spent three units on that. From there, then we get into seventh chords, then we get into ninth chords, sus chords, sixth chords, add nine, all those other cool chords. And then the last unit, unit 12, is where we get into modes. So it's a live course that takes 16 weeks or it's a self-paced program. I designed it to be a live course. So if you join the live every week, you have a theory component, a song learning activity, and a creative activity, just so you're integrating it as you go along. You share your work with your peers. We have two Zoom sessions weekly. The idea is to try to come to one. One's on a weekend morning, one's on a weekday evening, just to accommodate different time zones. It's basically like a college course. You know, you have your classmates, you have your community, you have your work, and it's just, you, you get access to new content one week at a time. And the self-paced is basically just gives you full access to the whole program. You get to watch replays of previous cohorts where we did the live Zooms um, and you just get everything all at once, but it's half the price being there's no live interaction. Anyway, if you like the fret live method, the graphics that we use, this is that to the max. Every single lesson has these fretboard animations and where you could see uh, the scales and the chords overlaid onto the fretboard. All right, everybody. Well, if you're interested in that, the link is in the description to join the course. Otherwise, thank you for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Happy playing. Have fun workshopping these ideas. And before I go, I just want to extend a huge thank you to the following POW Music patrons. Jason, Shogun7, Nick P, Billy Paps, Pete Elliott, Sean Westfall, Wes Williams, Eric Pelez, Darren Jones, Dr. Ixlin, Andy, Dennis McNulty, Paul Weatherall, Hal Jones, T. Fletch, Dimitri Unkovsky, Greg, Joe, Wayne Evans, Jeff Lambert, Jorge Vaz, Jack Williams, Joe Prengel, L.W., Dave Hubner, Fred Locke, Ruben Garcia, Kay Carter, Steve C., Jens Fisher, Joseph Alpert, Mu Jang, Darren, Jonas, Jesse Jacobs, David McPherson, Michael L., Brent Owens, Andrew Gunthart, Jay Brilliant, Jake Martin, William Creighton, Donald James Grass, Chris Freeman, Stephen Pisano, Trampus Thompson, Kent Gresham, John Cushman, Bob Aschetti, Derek Mickle, Sean Ellis, Jeff Weatherwax, Boomer Dell, and Joe Fleck. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of the POW Music patrons for helping to make it possible to provide all this free content here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Happy playing. I'll see you next time.